they allow her to change her name from Jaylee to Andrew. She was taking the hormones. She was not happy. She changed her name, was not happy. Everything that they done didn't work. In the morning, like 8.15, I received a phone call from the coroner's office. Hi, welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to talk about another tragedy in the gender affirming space again. This one, a young person took their life. So this has been about three years that this happened three years ago. And this young person was 19 and started gender affirming care at 16, was taken away from her family because supposedly the family would not, oh my God, I just can't even say it affirm their child's gender, which is so absurd and insane. So CPS took their child away and the child just went downhill from there. And I have always been saying, we already have too many kids in foster care. Why would we take kids away from loving families just because you think they're not affirming their child's gender choice? Unbelievable to me. This is the most tragic story. It is actually insane. I had to stop looking at the videos because I couldn't stop crying. I had to take a break before I could even make this video. So with that, thanks for liking, subscribing. Thank you so much for helping getting these videos out there. You can't believe the stories people are sending me. It's all because of you all caring about these young people and caring that we get these stories out there. So I'm not going to cry. I promise I'm not. I'm going to get I'm just going to get going here. So I'm going to bring up this first one because it will give you a little background of what we're talking about here. Okay, here we go. Yaley, she was the girly girl in the house. She used to dress up as a princess. She loved to dance, sing, and she was very artistic. When she was 13, She's starting to go into social media. I noticed that she was sort of depressed because she's starting to herself and I seek for help. The first uh, year in high school, freshman year, she met this other girl who was going into transgender. She was the one who was telling her that she was depressed because maybe she was not a girl. She was invited to go to an LGBTQ uh, group at school. I didn't know about it. She asked everybody in the family to call her Jay. So I did. Jay, okay, we called you Jay. If you're happy, we call her Jay. She was not happy. And then she came up with Andrew. So that sounds to me like the parents were completely affirming their child's choice of name and pronouns. And they were literally calling her the name she wanted to be called by. But I don't know if you caught the first part. You probably did. But let me just remind you what the mother said is that she got on social media and then another kid started telling her you're trans. I don't know how many of these stories I have heard the almost exact same scenario. And that's when DCFS was involved because I didn't support all the changes that she was telling everybody that she was a transgender and she was in the process of it. When DCFS was involved, uh, the school psych psychology uh, wrote a note saying that my daughter was better off out of my home because we were not supported towards uh, the change. She was 16 years old when she moved out. I didn't have any support from school. I didn't have any support from um, anyone. I was the bad guy. And even though I talked to them about the depression, they didn't care about that. It didn't matter. They decided to keep my daughter at this group home. And it breaks my heart because to them, it was like if we keep her out of your home, she have more chance. They took the child at 16 out of the home, DCSF or whatever it's called, Children's Services, took the child out because they weren't supposedly affirm. And it all goes through the school counselor. The schools are involved in this, people. The actual LA Unified School District is involved in this. Taking children out of school because you don't affirm somebody's gender, that it should be, I just can't even, I'm like, 
actually speechless and disgusted. So now what? It just goes all downhill from here. All downhill from here. To survive and not, she's not going to try to commit suicide. They allow her to change her name from Jaylee to Andrew. She was taking the hormones. She was not happy. She changed her name, was not happy. Everything that they done didn't work. In the morning, like 8.15, I received a phone call from the coroner's office. When they asked me... So they started giving her hormones at the group foster home. Do you remember how old she is? 16, without the parental consent. This is happening, everybody. Stop saying it's not happening. It is actually happening. They took a child out of a loving home. I can tell these people love their kid. So what if they're not affirming? But to me, they were affirming. That's the thing that's even more distressing about this story is that the parents were. They were calling her the name she wanted. They were calling her Andrew, whatever the heck other boy names she was coming at. Notice how she's always changing the boy name too. That's also part of this whole thing. They keep changing their name because they're not... They're not solid. They're not even getting mental health care to understand. Their friend told them they were trans. And next thing you know, their friends are probably telling them your parents don't understand you. That That's the part that's just so distressing. This is the saddest part. This part, I hope you're sitting down. I hope you're not driving. When they ask me, are you Jaylee Galdemis' mom, a.k.a. Andrew? And they say yes. Who's calling? And she said, well, uh, are you home? No, I just dropped off my son at school. So, oh, I need you to park the car. And then my heart went like crazy. I just got off the first exit. I parked my car. Tell me where's my daughter. I want to go see her. And she said, I'm so sorry, but you, you're not going to be able to see your dad. They say, Why? What the this is the coroner calling the mother while she's driving after she dropped off her son to school and she's already worried about her own child and that foster group home and then the, the coroner's calling her you better pull over anybody who knows anything knows something bad is about to happen what hospital is she in? i just want to see her Man, last night, she took her life away, and I said, no, where, tell me what happened. I got off the car, I was screaming like crazy, I was screaming, I said, no, I want my daughter. So she was 19 when they decided to take her life away, because she was not happy. None of the stuff that they allow her to do work. At the end, they took my child. They took her child. Who's responsible for this? Somebody needs to be held responsible for this. This is not okay. It's not normal. If I don't under, understand in any other circumstance how anyone, and especially the state of California, we're talking about our government. The people who run our countries, who run, who run our country, who run our states, who, what is happening? that they're getting away with this. This is my first time talking about the her story, what really happened, because I want everybody to know that the system is taking our children away. They are not helping them. And wow, it takes a lot of courage for a mother to say all this. I mean, she is suffering beyond anything. And any of you parents, even if you're not a parent, you've got to feel the pain coming from this parent who lost their daughter because somebody said they were trans when they were not trans. Now, I found this clip also, and I'm going to put the links to where I found these clips so you can see the full clips and all the stuff here afterward and support the channels that I uh, got all this information from. And I will put a thank you in, in the description of the video because I thank all of these people for doing the work. I'm not doing the work. I'm just here bringing the message again. So I can't do any of this, not, not only without you, but also without these amazing organizations helping us. So this is the mother, Abigail Martinez, and she testified in front of this, the California 
state Senate, uh, to, they were going to try to pass this bill uh, called the AB 957, which was uh, the gender affirming bill that they could take your child away from you. Uh, mostly it was in a custody battle, but they could take your child away from you if you if one of the parent if two parents are there and they're having a divorce or whatever, and the child is wanting to be trans and one parent doesn't and the other one does, the parent who does can actually take the child away from the other parent along with the state. It, it what well, now our states are taking our kids. What's next? Wow. So here's the mom testifying, which takes a lot of courage. My name is Abigail Martinez. It has been three years and 164 days since I lost my daughter, Yaley. I miss her every single day. Let me tell you how she died. My daughter was murdered by a gender ideology. CPS took my daughter when she was 16 years old. It was helped by her public school counselor and LGBTQ group rights and another trans identified girl. So there you go. She just spilled the beans right there in front of everybody in the Senate meeting going against AB 9. AB 957. So I'm going to put the link to this video. You should watch the whole thing. It's so distressing and insane. You're just not even going to believe it. But I want to get to this part. Not that the whole thing isn't important, but I want to get to this one particular point so that um, I can talk a little bit more after this because this this part is, is the tragedy. And my daughter was in a horrible mental and physical pain. My daughter knelt down in front of a train. She was murdered by gender ideology. I beg you, stop pushing gender ideology. I don't want any parent to feel what I feel every day. Affirmation is not good for the health, safety, and welfare of a ch any child. Now, her daughter knelt down in front of a train. Do you, can you even put your brain around that? Do you understand the insanity of that to actually get run over by a train? The pain of that child being put in that home away from her family, away from her actual support group. I guarantee you this kid was not trans. They were giving this kid hormones, which is so dangerous. When you don't understand, when you are being pushed, that kid was pushed into this. It was an, it's, a, it's an ideology. This kid had no mental health care. Plucked from a loving home, put in a place away from her family, probably not even being able to see her family. I'll bet you they weren't even allowed to talk because that's how that whole system works. They think the family is abusive. So they stop you from even having a conversation with your family because they make all the decisions. It, it just, it, it got worse. It snowballed and snowballed and snowballed until this child killed themselves at 19 years old, another child. The last two ones I brought you were 23 and 24. It's getting younger now. 19. She started at 16. Removed from her home. Put in a system. Never should have happened. I really would love to find out, and I'm going to try to dig around to see the follow-up of this and what has happened. Now, here's what I know about a AB957. It was vetoed by Newsom. Okay, so this is a good thing. It didn't pass. But this what I want to read you. So this is the part that is important to me because I cannot stand this guy at all. And I think he's he's this is the guy. This is the senator. And I want you all to know this. You need if you don't know this, you need to know this. We need to vote this guy out of office. He is one of the people who are creating these bills, who are putting this false ideological trans kid stuff out there. He's creepy and weird, okay? I am not okay with this dude, okay, being a representative. He's a senator in our state of California. Senator Scott Weiner of San Francisco, 
okay, appear to ignore the concerns from parents, of course, across California and the country. He claimed that opposition to the bill was erasing trans kids and that the coverage of AB 957 was a coordinated campaign of right wing media. I can't stand this guy. He's I'm not right wing. I am an actual registered Democrat. A lot of these people who are belong to this thing are Democrats. This has nothing to do with being right wing and everything to do with doing the right thing. Okay, yes, I'm right thing. I'm not right wing. Knock it off. And that's how you can tell these people are fake because they keep making these tropes, right? He further claimed that this campaign was meant to serve a narrative criticizing the fact that gay men had introduced a bill. What are you, a gay man? He's a gay man. What are you talking about, dude? So I just wanted to, I'll put that up here as well. While I'm talking about it and I'll put a link to this. Tragedy, another tragedy. I mean, I don't know how many more. You, you are all sending me so many stories. It's crazy and I appreciate it so much. Keep sending me that, keep sending it. I'm gonna do all of these stories. I'm gonna put all of this out here. We need to end this gender affirming care. We need to end this trans kids. We need to end this idea that you know more than what a parent does. We need to end it all. It's disgusting, it's child abuse, it's wrong. I'm a transsexual of 32 years transitioned experience. I did this as an adult. It's an adult only space. It is a mental health space. You need to be understand what you're getting yourself into and the long-term effects of what this is going to do, not only to your body, to your psyche, and to how you walk the world. If you don't understand all of these things, this is the tragedy that will happen. Shame on all of us for letting this happen to a young 19 year old girl. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all so much. I can't do it without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everything means so much to me to be able to bring these stories. And <laughs> I told you I wasn't gonna cry, but I mean, wow, you gotta have a heart, black heart if you're not crying at the end of this one. So with that, thank you guys so much. And um, like, subscribe, do the comments, I read them all. and. Again, I do appreciate you and I'm sending you tons of love.